Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Small Engines Questions and Answers. What I do in these Q&A videos is answer questions that I receive from my viewers. Today's Thursday and we've been getting a lot of snow this week. You can see on my shed roof there's at least a foot there. We got a foot of snow yesterday and we're supposed to get another 50 centimeters, so that would be another foot and a half. This is actually more normal for winters here in Canada. The last few winters we did not have snow at this time or barely any. So this makes for a nicer winter. It's a lot nicer than when there's no snow. My first question today is in regards to the carburetor linkage on a snowblower engine. Because there's so many details in the question, I'm just going to read it out to you guys today. The YouTuber asks if the linkage is connected properly on my snowblower, but you have to manually move the linkage to close the butterfly slightly, a quarter inch of linkage movement, do you think a spring has gone weak? Well, my answer to that is probably yes. It's hard to say without seeing it, but I'm going to show you a Tecumseh engine here on a snowblower, and I'll give you some possibilities as to what may be causing your problem. Here's a Tecumseh engine. What could be causing his problem is the spring underneath here, the butterfly for the throttle. It could also be the spring inside here. This is the throttle control unit. Now, if you have a broken spring in here, you have to replace the whole throttle bracket assembly. And the small spring under the throttle lever here can be replaced separately. It's very inexpensive and it can solve your problem. If that little spring's broken, when you release the throttle, it's not going to come back right to the adjusting screw over here. So it could idle a bit faster than what you want it to. And another possibility could be that there's something obstructing the linkages. You want to make sure nothing's rubbing on them or preventing them from coming back the way they should. In my next question, a YouTuber has a Craftsman snowblower and I'll assume he has a Tecumseh engine just like this one I just showed you. Now his problem is that it backfires a lot. He even replaced the whole carburetor, the fuel lines and the oil in the engine and he says it still backfires. Well since he's done all this work, I'll assume that there could be a valve that's leaking on his engine and usually it's the exhaust valve. I do have a video showing me starting up an engine like this and you can see the muffler glowing red because the exhaust valve is leaking. I'll assume he's got the same problem. An easy way to diagnose this is you can start it up at nighttime. If your muffler glows red then the exhaust valve is leaking. That's what I'll recommend that he does on his blower. Also you can take off the cover over here, check the valve lash. You want 8 thousandths of an inch for the intake and 12 thousandths of an inch for the exhaust valve on these Tecumseh engines. And by the way these are flathead engines, they are not overhead valve. I've had the same experience, I've replaced even the carburetor on an engine one time and it was still backfiring until I adjusted the valves. Sometimes if the valves are too gone you may have to replace them. If you do most of the work yourself it's probably worth it but some shops will be so expensive that it's not going to be worth doing. So therefore you'd want to count the cost before you commit yourself to spending that kind of money. A YouTuber the other day asked me what kind of parts washer do you use in your shop? Well my parts washer isn't an expensive one, it's just something that's practical. I think it's 20 gallons. By 20 gallons I mean capacity, here it is. It's made by OTC, I think it's a cheaper version of Jet Tools. Now it's a pretty generic parts washer, you can buy these, they look the same but they're just branded differently. And when you open it up there's quite a bit of room in here. It's not the most heavy duty washer out there but for what I do it's fine. I've even put engines in here and washed them up. And inside here I use parts washer fluid, it's made by Clean Flow. And by the way, I only paid $150 for this thing. Actually, the washer stuff cost just as much. I think that was $140. I'm going to make a more in-depth video on it in the future, but just for today, I thought I'd show you guys. Another question I often get is, why doesn't my snowblower primer work? Again, I'm going to show you the same Tecumseh engine here. For those of you who aren't familiar, this is the primer button over here. And if you look at the carburetor here, you can see the primer line. Now, a very common problem that I see on these specific engines is that the primer line here will break off right at the connector on the carb. This one here is on pretty tight but sometimes you will see the line has broken off and is just dangling underneath the carb. And you're also going to see the other part of the line connected on the connector. So often all you have to do is snip the line a bit, take off the old line from the connector and just put it back on. Now that's one possibility as to why your primer may not be priming. It could also be that the primer line is punctured or severed inside the engine over here. So you may want to take off the cover here and look at the line and possibly replace it. The other thing too is if your primer is pushed in and it doesn't want to come back out, it needs to be replaced. And another question I get in regards to the primers on these engines is, 
Is it normal for gas to leak out of the carb when I prime it too much? Well, definitely it is normal. The gas will leak out and go on the floor or the ground. Typically, I only have to prime it two to three times with the choke on full and the throttle halfway, and it will usually start right away. Here's an older Partner 7000 Plus that I want to show you guys. I got this from a customer the other day and basically I just want to ask you guys if you would like to see a video series on me trying to repair this saw. The top end is good, what I mean by that is the piston rings and cylinder. So I'd like to just basically fix it up and see how she works. It's a 70cc chainsaw so I'll imagine it would have a lot of power. All the parts seem to be there, it's probably going to need like a carb kit or just basic things like that. Actually this saw does need one of these here on the flywheel as you can see it's broken so I hope I can find one. It is an odd looking one. I thought maybe I could take one from a bigger Husqvarna chainsaw but I'm not sure if it's going to fit. And I think the little spring is still good so all I would need is the actual metal part over here. If anybody's watching and you do have this part please let me know and I'll buy it off you. And definitely anybody who finds me this part I will give them a shout out on my Q&A videos to their channel. If anybody watching the video today owns one of these, please comment. It'd be nice to hear what you guys think about these chainsaws. Another question I get asked sometimes is, how can I tell how many cc's my steel chainsaw has? Well, all you have to do is look at the tag here on the back of your saw. For example, this one has 40 cc's and it's an MS-230. Sometimes the tags are gone, so if that's the case, you can ask the steel dealer or you can go online and type in your model number. Now, since it's winter time in many countries now, a lot of people are asking me what to look for when they buy a snowblower. And by the way, I do have a video that I posted last year that shows what to look for when buying a used snowblower. And what I'll do is post a link to that video underneath today's video. I highly recommend that you go watch it because sometimes when you buy a used snowblower, they can need a lot of repairs. I've seen people buy used snowblowers that were just garbage. They were not even worth fixing. So beware when you buy a used snowblower that you're not getting a lemon. I'm also going to give you a quick tip today on wood splitters. Specifically this wood splitter here. It's a two-way splitter. As you can see it's sharp on both edges. After you split one block you can actually have a block behind it and just go back and forth. It is much quicker. You're going to split your wood in half the time. Now it's going to cost a bit more money for those of you guys who do a lot of wood splitting it's probably worth it. And this one here has a Honda engine. It's a really good engine actually. And this splitter is called the Split Fire 3255. Not quite sure how much these cost brand new, but it is definitely a nice splitter to use. And you can tow it behind your car or your truck with a trailer hitch. Anyways, if you're in the market for wood splitter, definitely check out the two-way splitters like this. Make sure to subscribe, check out my channel for hundreds of repair videos and come back next Friday for another video.